good morning and uh, warm greetings to you from the Foreign Land Benefice on this Pentecost Sunday morning, 31st of May. Now, before I, I speak about uh, Pentecost, we're going to, which is a which is a feast which is still celebrated today by by Jewish people. But first of all, though, this morning going to hear uh, a Bible reading from Acts chapter two, which describes the the Pentecost celebrations that w that took place exactly fifty days after the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And so Cloud is going to read that to us now. Be aware that there are some uh, a lot of uh, difficult pronunciations in this reading. Uh, different nations and nationalities are being described. But Claudia is now uh, going to read that to us and give it a go. The Holy Spirit comes. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Persians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Peter preaches to the crowd. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Claudia. And wasn't it appropriate that just as she was uh, talking, reading about the Holy Spirit coming as a, as a rush, a mighty rush of wind, that we saw the wind uh, actually blowing there around her. So when Jesus ascended back into heaven, he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the power of God came upon them from 
on high. They didn't, the disciples didn't really know what that meant, but as they were waiting, as they waited, they read the scriptures, uh, the Old Testament, uh, the Bible. That was the only part of the Bible that existed uh, at that time. And just as Jesus himself had re repeatedly uh, read uh, the, the, the Old Testament and taught his followers to do the same, and as they, as they, as, and as they read, it encouraged them and, and it built them up. <clears throat> and, as, and as we read as well, our fears um, are dissipated, they're replaced with hope. Our anxieties are, are replaced with joy. And I can't emphasise too much how important it is um, for us to read the Bible, especially in this uh, current season that, that we're in. In fact, not to read the Bible would be like denying a, a starving man uh, food to eat. The Bible sheds light on our lives. It, 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 it's all we need for our lives. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It's full of wisdom. It's, it's, it's full of guidance and truth for our daily lives. And it reminds us that God is in complete control, even in the times of crisis. It reveals to us that God loves us, that he's there to help us, and that he cares for us, and he's not going to let us down. So, the disciples were, were waiting, but they didn't know exactly what, we were waiting for and in fact they didn't really understand how Jesus promise could be fulfilled because he told them he would be always with them and yet he'd ascended back into heaven so how could he always be with them when physically he wasn't actually with them anymore so that didn't make any sense to them at all but then uh, as they were waiting suddenly it all happened and the Holy Spirit came, came upon them and immediately they knew, um, they knew for certain two things I was going to talk about uh, quickly. Firstly, they knew how much Jesus loved them because now they knew he'd come to them. He, he was actually living in their bodies. He was in their hearts. He was there. He was with them. And they knew how much he loved them. Someone has said the Bible is God's love letter to the human race. And the Holy Spirit is the messenger of that love to us. But someone else has also said that the Bible, B-I-B-L-E as it spells, stands for best instructions before leaving earth. And so it's a must read. Don't put it off. And if you don't hear God speaking, as it were, the first time or the second time, keep going back to it. Keep going back to it. Persisting. God's word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path, the psalmist says. And when, when you read God's word, your faith grows and, and your fears uh, will disappear. Many of us... On a practical note, many of us use use Bible reading notes, and um, it, many are available. And if that's something you need some help with, then please contact me. My details are on the Pouring on Benefits uh, website, and we'd love to help you with that. Uh, the, the, and I, I've been reading the I've been using the Bible app just recently, and you can even hear the Bible read to you uh, if you wish. And the second thing about uh, that, that what happened and what that realization that dawned on the disciples on that Pentecost morning. Firstly, there was they knew for certain that Jesus really did love them. But secondly, they also knew that all these happenings that had happened that that, well, that means that, that his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and now the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them at Pentecost. All these things were happening in fulfilment of God's plans of of, of his. Of, his, of, of, of what scripture had said would happen. And in fact, at Jesus' arrest just before his crucifixion, Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, says to them, all this has taken place 
that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And I just want to refer to a, a couple of very important examples of how uh, the Old Testament scriptures were fulfilled um, at Pentecost and how they connect us uh, with, uh, with Jesus. Firstly, in Genesis chapter 11, uh, that's the story of the Tower of Babel. And we see God judging the evil of the people at that time by giving them uh, different languages and then dispersing them across uh, the world. But now on this day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, that's reversed. And God gives uh, the disciples different languages and draws the nations of the world or the nations of the known world at that time together to hear the wonderful promises and the news of God's redemption. And they hear it in each of their own languages. And so God draws them back, is drawing the world back into a relationship with him. And that marked the beginning of that process, which is still going on today. The Jewish nation is the chosen nation by which God's love is being made known to the whole world. And way back uh, in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 12, uh, God said to Abraham, even before Israel as a, as a nation existed, God said to Abraham, the patriarch of the nation, he said, through you shall all the nations of the world be blessed. Just another second example, important example of how the events of Pentecost link with the Old Testament is the story from Exodus chapter 20 and it describes how a holy and a righteous God uh, exactly 50 days after the Exodus from Egypt uh, Israel was freed from, from slavery and describes how a holy and a righteous God came down on Mount Sinai uh, with fire and smoke it says to give Moses the law uh, the, the Ten Commandments, written on tablets of stone. And this is the event which actually today uh, Jewish people celebrate at Pentecost. That is their celebration of Pentecost, the giving of the law. But for Christians, this Old Testament uh, event is understood as a, as a foreshadowing of the coming of the Holy Spirit at, at Pentecost which also was exactly 50 days after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that event, as Christians we believe, freed the whole human race from the bondage and slavery of sin and death and evil. The Holy Spirit comes to live uh, in believers. The Holy Spirit comes to write God's law uh, in our heart, something which the which the written law on stone tablets could could never do, though it pointed to it. So those two uh, important connections uh, between Pentecost uh, in the New Testament and a couple of events there from the Old Testament, some um, uh, prophecies in the Old Testament. So Peter preaches these truths to the crowd, other truths as well from the Bible, quoting the Bible extensively in Acts chapter, chapter 2. <clears throat> and he urges people to repent. And 3,000 people, it says, were persuaded and, and convicted to believe in Jesus and to walk with him and to tell others about the amazing love and the amazing forgiveness of God's sins, his amazing love for the world. You know, today, perhaps you may be among those people who are thinking, you know what, this year has been such a a mess, it, it, it's such a crisis, we, we, we perhaps just need to write off this year as, as, as doom and gloom. Maybe you're someone who's perhaps challenged by a, by a health condition or you're worried about your your work situation or you or your you're worried about your finances or you feel frustrated that you can't do this or you can't do that 
But you know what? Maybe this is a special year. Maybe this is a special time. Who, lo who knows how long it's going to last? Maybe this, maybe this is the time when God really wants to do something in your life. When he really wants to speak to you about your life. I read somewhere uh, that someone described the coronavirus as uh, cleaning the lens so that we can see things more clearly. And I think that's true. So let's make this year, 2020, the most significant year yet for us, for our lives. God is maybe doing a deep work in us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you uh, for the Bible. We thank you that uh, the disciples and, and Peter uh, waited upon your word, read your word, were guided by your word. And as they did, their fears uh, just went away. Thank you, Lord, that they believed in you, that they looked to you for their future. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who came down to put your love for us in our hearts, to put your presence in our lives. And Lord, we, ask, we, we confess that if we have written off this year with all the crises that we've been going through, Lord, help us to respond to your word speaking to us when there's so much that you want to do in our lives and so much that you want to achieve right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to finish now with another prayer, a final prayer, uh, which I... Uh, uh, comes from the Bible app actually and it, I've just downloaded it and I'm going to read this out as a final prayer to finish our service, our reflection uh, this morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's your name that is honoured from generation to generation for you alone are worthy of all glory and all praise. And you are not shocked by the state of the world right now. Your ways are not our ways. And you are not at a loss about what to do. Nothing is impossible for you. Lord, be glorified through this pandemic. That your name will be known and praised throughout the earth. Lord, pierce the darkness with your light. Lord, shine brighter than the fear of death, or economic ruin, or a long quarantine. And when we look back on this moment in history, may we be filled with joy as we remember the revival, the hope, and the peace that came out of this season. Lord, continue to draw this hurting world back to yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.